Introduction to Repos by Treasury Peer, treasurypeer.com. Repo is short for repurchase agreement. The sale and repurchase regards a collateral, for instance, a bond, bill, commercial paper, or equity, or another financial asset. In a bilateral repo, there are two parties, the seller, which also is the borrower, and the buyer, which also is the lender. The seller or borrower must own a collateral the buyer or lender accepts as security for the loan. The purpose of a repo is to provide double indemnity. This means that if the seller or borrower cannot repay at maturity, the buyer lender can liquidate the collateral to regain all or parts of the outstanding debt. This is how a repo works. You have a lender and buyer with cash to be lent. You have a borrower and seller with collateral being pledged and interest to pay for the cash. The duration of the repo or loan is between the opening and the closing legs. The opening leg when the cash and collateral shifts hands. You have the lender and buyer that receives collateral from the borrower or seller and the lender and the borrower in return provides the borrower and seller with the cash. The closing leg when the cash and collateral are returned. The lender and buyer returns the collateral and the borrower or seller returns the cash plus interest. In a tri-party repo, there is a third party being a custodian bank or an international clearing organization, the tri-party agent acting as an intermediary between the seller and the buyer. The tri-party agent is neutral and ensures that the repo is seamless and all transactions are performed properly. Now we will hear from one tri-party agent, Clearstream, explaining drivers and other insights from the repo market. Sorry, I that again. So, Richie Glenn at uh, Clearstream, why is collateral management important for the corporate sector right now? Um, I think it's become more relevant because it's a direct reaction to the regulations and the changes now that are being imposed on the banks. Um, more and more uh, counterparties are looking specifically at secured investments, and therefore, then the importance of collateral is starting to grow not only across the banking industry, more importantly, who the banks uh, want to or want to be able to trade with. Um, I think the critical change is also now the focus on longer term investment, specifically the regulations trying to encourage banks to uh, think outside the box, to move away from the recent stresses that we've seen in the markets. And the only way to do that is to actually then attract longer term liquidity and to secure the, uh, using collateral. Um, I think the other change is also now coming also from regulation with OTC derivatives. More and more counterparties are going to be forced to post collateral for uh, initial margin requirements. And to do that, ultimately, collateral is the, is the way to do that. The question is how corporates can get access to assets to do that. Ultimately, a tripartite program such as ourselves actually provides automated technology for the corporates to do that. But more importantly, it also opens up access to a wider world of clearing houses and counterparties uh, globally. Okay, thank you. So this is uh, Steve Letherby from Clearstream, our host today. Uh, what are the barriers of entry for the corporate sector into uh, collateral management? Well, historically, uh, the barriers of entry have been the documentation side of things. Um, Clearstream have now looked to simplify that process. Um, we have introduced a, a one-stop shop for documentation, which encompasses basically our, our tri-party collateral management service agreement alongside what's called our Clearstream repurchase conditions, which basically act as a master repurchase agreement for use within the Clearstream tri-party world. Um, again, this is something that's quite unique for tri-party and we're the only people that have released such a product. Um, and again, from a, uh, an introduction into, into tri-party, it's ideal. Um, it, it, say it lowers a lot of barriers to entry with regards to GMRAs and other documents that are required um, to, to set up within tri-party. So what about interconnectivity? That's also a big issue with collateral management. Absolutely. I mean, that's, again, it's another, another reason why, why corporate treasurers perhaps not looked at um, entering into the tri-party world. Uh, Clearstream, again, are looking to, to try to solve that problem. We've, 
we've connected with a, a number of um, uh, trading platforms out there, so we have connections into 360T, also into Bloomberg, and of course we also have our own Croatia Online platform, where, which enables the corporate treasurer to, to manage their tri-party uh, collateral management instructions. Um, we're also looking to connect to other third-party systems uh, in the future. Good, thank you. I'm Marie Moore from uh, Plan International. Thank you for uh, being with us today. Uh, what's your takeaway for from the roundtable today? Michael, so I think that the um, it was my first roundtable uh, with um, Treasury Peer, and it was an absolutely fantastic opportunity to meet our fellow treasurers from the corporate sector as well as um, the NGO sector that I'm currently in, and uh, to share our views of current challenges, to um, realise that our challenges are are similar and um, to, to discuss in a very informal manner, and the discussions were very honest, um, to discuss the marketplace, regulation, and a whole variety of topics from um, uh, foreign exchange through to um, the outlook for Europe, and um, to, to do so uh, in uh, an environment where you could be honest with your, your views. Thank you.